Back to Spin Rack. So, Disney's done it. Disney's done it. What can I say? So far, we're in August of 2019. And if you look at the biggest movies of the world right now, Disney has the biggest, the top six. And yeah, I'll, I'll read them off to you. Avengers Endgame, $2.8 billion. Lion King, $1.2 and counting. Captain Marvel, $1.1 billion. Spider-Man Far From Home, while not technically a Disney film, it is part of the MCU. 1.1 billion. Aladdin, 1 billion. A movie people were knocking say it's gonna be the next Dumbo. A billion dollars. In fact, a very enjoyable movie. Toy Story 4, 965 million dollars. If it doesn't make the billion dollar mark, it's gonna be like this, close as heck. That means the top six stories of the entire year so far have been Disney movies. And they're all the billion dollar movies are Disney movies. You know, as you look down the list and stuff to see who's made billions, who's made money, the number 10 is Alita Battle Angel by Fox. Wait a second, Disney owns Fox. That's $400 million you gotta throw to Fox. Number nine, Pokemon Detectives, 431 million. How to Train Your Dragon, that's Universal, 519 million. So basically, set, oh, and the Wandering Earth, that was made out of China. So, you know, what the heck? Out of the 10 movies, Disney has six, no, excuse me, seven movies in the top 10 so far for the year. And the year ain't even up. And we're talking about they're gonna have Lost, not Lost, they're gonna have Frozen coming out in the fall for Thanksgiving. And then, what are we gonna have? The next, um, the, 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 the Rise of the Skywalkers by Star Wars. So, Disney is looking at a freaking bang out year. We're talking about they've already made what? Three, four, five, six, seven billion dollars already, you know, and the year is still going. And this is because they've combined with Fox. And I mean, it's not just Fox, but they got Fox. They have Pixar, which they bought. They got Marvel Studios, which they own. They have their regular studios where they're releasing the Lion King live reimagined animated um, live action films and Dumbo and Aladdin and three films there. Then you have the Spider Man. Not the Spider-Man. You have the Avengers. Yeah, the Spider-Man is related. The Captain Marvel film. Then you have the um, the, the 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 Fox stuff. You know, what what was the Fox? The Battle Angel. You know, where Fox was pushing the the envelope. It's amazing. And the question is whether or not all of these, when this merger was, whether all of these could actually coexist together. You know, where they wouldn't, um, what do you call, it, cannibalize one another. You know, because they're all under one huge studio. But it seems that guess what? Marvel has come in, it pushed in like this, and it's opened up a space. All the other competitors had took a step back. You know what I'm trying to say? They took a step back. No one else is touching anything close. The, the, the largest grossing non-Marvel movie from the United States was How to Train Your Dragon at half a billion dollars. That is nuts. Nuts, 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 you know? So I, either the other studios gotta step up their game or whatever, but clearly Marvel owning all these properties is not cannibalizing. Of course, some have not done as well as others. Dumbo didn't do as well as what it should have done. That's done like uh, $350 million. I don't know how much money Marvel put into it. According to the numbers here Marvel put into it, they claim $170 million. So what have we talked about in the past? A company, a movie needs to make at least three times whatever the actual production costs or they are, but this cost doesn't include advertising, it doesn't include distribution, you know, in other places they don't get the full amount, so like in China you get like 20, 25% of the actual um, take, so it's, there's a lot of different things. Dark Phoenix underperformed, and that I think was a, just a slam job by Marvel. I think I've said that before, and you know, they didn't want to um, support this movie as much as they could. They don't even have a doggone production value on this particular bu bu budget, you know, so yeah, there's some issues there, but, and I think definitely, have coming after major Marvel films and no tie-in, that film definitely got hurt really bad. And the New Mutants film, God knows when we're gonna ever see the light of day, if it should ever see the light of day. You know, they keep promising to change that up, but we'll see. You know, the, the superhero movies they could have done, 
I like Shazam. I got it. It's number 12, and I don't know why. I think Shazam is a family-friendly film. It would have been much better than it should have done. But, you know, when you're in the year of the end game, everything else falls to the wayside. But <laughs> Disney's gonna would, would have had a great year without the superhero films. Lion King at a billion dollars. Aladdin at a billion dollars. Toy Story is almost at a billion dollars. You know, so what are you saying? That would have been a three billion dollar year almost, probably. You know, and they're just continuing. Now, if the other studios don't get their act together, and again, I was against this whole Fox merger because now you concentrated power in just one studio. They, and basically, the studios competing against each other: Pixar versus Marvel, um, live do Disney animation versus. Um, Cartoons, you know, it's just a battle, a free for all, and it, and all it does is benefit one dude, you know, the dude who runs, um, the dude who runs um, Iger, the guy who runs um, the whole studio of um, Disney, the guy who who is the architect of the plan of what let's buy the childhood, we'll buy we'll buy Pixar, we'll buy Star Wars, we'll buy Marvel, we'll buy you know, any, Fox, anything in there that's come out edgy, this that that could could build properties, and this is what Marvel, why they've been so successful. When they buy a property, they're thinking not only short term, which is, oh, this is the film or the story that we're doing, but they're also thinking longer term. How can we merchandise this? How can we put this in our theaters? How, how, many, how can we sell t-shirts? So all these ancillary incomes are going to make money. So when they bought st uh, Marvel, people were like, oh, that's the most expensive money you've ever spent. I think they spent th the 25 times Marvel's profit or whatever. And they're like, oh, that's ridiculous. But Marvel... The cost of Endgame alone is more than the cost of what it was to buy Marvel. What do you say about that? Marvel has paid back dividends. And we're not even talking about t-shirt money. We're not even talking about merchandising money. We're not talking about theme park money, you know? <laughs> Marvel's got it all. And all I can say is that, you know, Fox isn't going to bring a lot in this game because they, they, their movie game was never as strong. But now that Marvel has X-Men, I'm not, wait till the X-Men movies start coming out. It's going to be a freaking juggernaut. They're already going. To, they're already pushing um, um, Fantastic Four. All I gotta say is one word: juggernaut. And if it continues this way, the English language movie market is going to be dominated by Marvel, and everybody else is a house on it. So listen, spin a rack out. If you like what I'm saying, comment, leave a like, and hey, if you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. But tell me why. Spin a rack out.